Welcome back to What RT Nibs for General Disturbance. This is a Universal Carrier 2 Pounder. It's a Tier 2 British tank destroyer. It's located on the south spawn of Abbey and it's under the command of UK Scarface. Now, the UC 2 Pounder, well, the Universal Carrier was kind of battle taxi stroke tug stroke, uh, well, supply vehicle. And they built 90,000 of these, a huge number. Otherwise known as the Bren Gun Carrier, because as you can see, it's got a machine gun right in the front of the vehicle. But a number of them in Canada were actually fitted with a two pounder gun. And this makes this quite a potent little tank destroyer, because the, the two pounder is a 40 millimeter gun capable of doing 55, or oh, actually 70 alpha on this one. 57 millimeters. Sorry, he hasn't got the two pounder gun, he's got the six pounder gun. I thought he had the two pounder gun. Nope. Well, this one's a, the six pounder, capable of 70 alpha, fairly accurate fire. It'll penetrate through 57 millimeters with the standard ammo and goes up to 72 millimeters with the premium. Now, you can see those two tanks down there. I think he just hit the tracks of the. TKS-20, he's gone, go for the Hargo. Well, that one landed short, but he should be able to get him with the next round. Yes, he did. And that Hargo pulled away a moment he got hit. So he obviously realized he was up against something which could do serious damage to him. Now it's a tier two game with tier two tanks in it only. He's only got the top of the FCM to fire at, and that, that guy's a very heavily armoured French light. Oh, that one went almost to him. That's better. Didn't pen, though. I think the, you can see the shell is literally is flying up and down onto the enemy. It's going quite high. He might want to fire the HE. He is firing the HE now. And no, he didn't get any of those on target. Okay, he's got some enemy tanks approaching on the west side of the map, including a BT-2 and a T-45. He's aiming for the T-45. He's still loaded the HE. Got a hit for 30. And another 60. HE does quite well under these circumstances. He's loaded the AP this time. Didn't get that hit, but pulling back because the T-45 took a shot at him and actually managed it at home. That BT... Is it BT-7 or BT-2? No, it's BT-2. He's actually fairly badly damaged. He's gone. Okay, there's a M2 Light fairly close, but he's taking fire. I think it was the Cruiser 2 that actually was shooting at him, but... Oh no, it wasn't him actually. It was um, somebody else. There's the T-45. Nice shot. Low roll though. Gets another one in. High roll this time. And the T45 is now one shot. If he pulls forward again, that's the end of his game. In fact, it wasn't him who got the kill. It was the Tiki just behind UK Scarface. He's got a number of enemy tanks on the, the Abbey Road. He's firing in. It's just a whole bunch of them there. It was a little too close to the bushes and that's why they could see where he was. Enemy Hargo, Japanese light tank. They've just managed to restore one of those at Bobbingdon. Ah, now he can use the push mechanic. His first shot hits the tracks of the FCM, but he goes to the AMR, AM, AMR 35, gets a hit. Gets another one into the tracks, tracks him. Gets the kill shot. Go for the FCM. Nice hit, low roll though. And a high roll this time. Keep it going. Got plenty of ammo. He's gone to the premium rounds now. There's the Hargo. Moving between the buildings. There's still enemy tanks there. He's using the premium ammo on the FCM. Tracks him. Go for the kill. Yes! That's his second kill. They now outnumber the enemy. Only by two tanks, but it is a difference. He's loaded the standard AP again, because the FCM was really the only one he did need to fire the premium ammo at. There's a T7 car over there. He could just about make him out. I think that hit the rocks. That's better. And he went straight through the armor. 
T7 car has only really got armour for uh, small arms fire. It's uh, basically a tank with machine guns. Can't see him now because he's backed up into cover. He's hiding between the rocks. We're only one tank up on the enemy now. TKS has turned up. There he is, that Polish little light tank, the premium one. That's the, that's the tank that Orlik managed to get his medal in. Oh, nice shot, but he's taking fire from a TKS with his auto cannon. Goes for another one. I think that was a hit. He's now taking machine gun fire, but he kills the TKS-20. It was the T-7 who's actually firing in on him. And of course, the Universal Carrier doesn't have much armor than the T-7 car does. It's not supposed to engage enemy tanks as such. And that's why it's only supposed to protect the crew from small arms fire. But the gun shield is really very, very light indeed. Can't see the T-7 car now. He is there, though. There he is. Oh, gets a hit. Now, five line shot. Potentially, he's got the high caliber, but he needs to keep up the uh, the rate on the enemy. He's got three kills so far. He needs to keep up the rate of fire on the enemy to make sure that he gets that high caliber medal. There might be somebody else out there who's got almost as many, almost as much damage. Still four enemy to kill. At this stage of the game, it's all about staying alive to get to the end. All the players so far in, in this game, the, the weak ones all died fairly early on. And the ones that are still alive, well, they just want to find the remaining enemy and wipe them out, but... It's easier said than done. I think the Tiki that's gone up the Lake Road, he's almost at the enemy cap area. Now, he's probably going to come across a seven-ton Polish tank. And the worry is that, of course, he might not survive that engagement. We can see on the minimap where all the enemy tanks were last seen. The seven ton Polish tank is the only one at the enemy cap area. But the big worry is where is that TKS-20? Where's the Hargo and where is the T7 car? Well, the T7 car is probably still in the water area. He's just hiding in there. Cruiser 2 is looking over the cap. Well, we lost the Tiki. The 7TP did kill him. Yeah, that was my big fear that that guy was going to get take him, take him out. And he never saw the 7TP, 7TP either. So, obviously, he was using a position of stealth in the bush mechanic to ensure that when he did kill the Tiki, he wasn't spotted. So, now there's four left on either side. Our SU-18 is sitting next to the cap area. I think he's actually on the side down there, yes. Waiting for somebody to spot an enemy so he can shoot at them. Now we're out of radio range of the Cruiser 2 and the FCM-36. So we don't know what's going on. We don't know where they've got moved to. Now, I have the feeling that UK Scarface has realised that their big weakness at the moment is there's nobody covering the river road. It's a good possibility that the 7TP abandoned the cap and came down this road because the only tank to come in from that direction was the Tiki. And he probably thought, well, there's nobody left on that side of the map. The enemy might also know where the FCM 36 and the Cruiser 2 are. 
Oh, and they've just killed a cruiser too, and it was the 17P that did it. So he's still at the enemy cap area. And again, he was he managed to kill the cruiser too without being spotted. So there's nobody on this river road as, as far as we can see at the moment. The SU-18 is moving over to the east side of the cap area. I think he's going to go and hide in the bushes. Meanwhile, UK Scarface is going to take his little TD up to the other end. Now, the uh, the Universal Carrier... Oh, there's the Hargo. He's actually returned to the cap area as well. But he's a lot, lot less hit points than the FCM. And he's got fairly weak armour. We've lost sight of him temporarily. But I think that UK Scarface might find him and be able to shoot him. There he is. Oh, he's over the ridge line. We can't see him, but we can see the Hargo. Actually, so we can get rid of him. One shot. That's all it takes. We can't see the TKS-20. But the question is, where is that 7TP? Actually, the 7TP has been wiped out. I didn't spot that. And now it's just the T7 car moving in. And UK Scarface wasn't aware. He fires one round and misses. Can he get the next one? No. Oh, that one went right over the top of him. Oh, and he's missed him again. And now he's around the other side of the rock. And unfortunately, we've lost the FCM. So it's now two versus two, and the SU-18s, rather than staying near the enemy, uh, near his own cap, has actually joined us up the river road. Now I didn't see where the 7TP got killed, but obviously the FCM-36 managed to find him and kill him. But now we've got two relatively fast enemy tanks who are going down the west side of the map. Why do we know that? Well, because we saw them head off in that direction. And I'm not sure what UK Scarface is trying to do here. I think he was trying to advance a little further along that uh, rise and get to a position where he could shoot at the enemy cap. But those guys are headed for our cap now. I don't think they're going to come back to their own cap. I think they're headed for our cap. Where he chooses to go down by the most direct route. And the FCM has managed uh, the FCM, the SU-18 has gone up onto the rise. So he can look for the enemy from a position of elevation. I'm wondering, is UK Scarface going to go to the cap and try and sit in the cap? I'm not sure that would be a wise decision. Seeing as he's only got 24 hit points left, it wouldn't take much in the way of damage for them to take him out. That's the two-minute siren. I'm expecting the enemy to start capping any second. They should have reached his cap by now. No, they're not coming back. I think they're going to your cap and they're going to start capping at the other end. You see, it only takes uh, half as long to cap out at the other end. It only takes them 50 seconds to cap. And if they both get into the cap right now... Yeah, UK Scarface has started capping. But will they start to cap? They could. It's too late for him to cap out now. He needs that SU-8 to join him in the cap. He can't do it on his own. And the enemy is capping. And they've got one in the cap already. It's too late for one, but they've got two at the other end. And if they put two into the cap right now, they can win the game. He can't cap out. There's not enough time for UK Scarface to cap out. Pointless him being in the cap. And yes, they have got two in the cap now. And they have got enough to do it within the next 30 seconds. They will win the game. And I don't think he's got enough time now to get back in time. I think the only way he could do this would be to go into the Abbey grounds and shoot from there. But I think it's just too late. I think he left it too late. The SU-8 didn't come with him. 
And now the enemy is going to cap out and win. It seemed fairly obvious to me at the time that both of those guys were headed out towards our cap for the reason of capping out both together. And yet yeah, three seconds left. Two, one. It's too late. It's done. It's all over. I think UK Scarface misread this one. And it's ended up as a loss. But did he get any compensation for it? Well, we'll find out right now. Yes, he did. He got an ace tanker. In fact, it's his first ace tanker in the UC2 Pounder. He managed to get a fire effect for doing more damage and hit points for his own vehicle. A fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. And a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got six. He did get the high caliber. He did actually do the most damage in the game. And he kept up the damage rate until he actually got the medal. But sadly, neither of the shots that he fired in the direction of that T7 carrier uh, actually got the, or any of those shots actually hit the target. If he'd actually hit that guy and taken him out, then he could have capped out against that lone enemy tank and he would have won. Well, if the SU-18 had joined him in the cap quickly enough, because it was already too late once he'd actually entered the cap to cap out on his own. Um, well, his win eight was very good. It was 10,254, which is super unicum standard. But it is a loss, I'm afraid. And let's have a look at the team score. Highest damage, 1,463 hit points of damage. The next high score being that 7TP. The guy was very stealthy. He actually got 1,003 hit points of damage. And we can see here he was killed by Cupcake Bullet, which I think, if we look on our list, will be the FCM 36. Yes, there it is. Yes, so he was killed by the FCM in the gap and I missed that completely I wasn't looking at that at the time uh, when it came to kills he got the highest number of those as well four kills for UK Scarface three kills for the 70p and the TKS 20 and two kills for the hard go the TKS 20 on our team the SU 18 and the FCM 36 and when it came to base XP it was actually the TKS 20 who did the best with 639 537 for the 70p and then it's UK Scarface with 423. He fired 55 rounds in that game, got 32 direct hits, 23 penetrations. Splash damage on one as well because he did fire HE rounds. 1,463 hit points of damage of which 339 were at more than 300 meters. He received 19 hits from the enemy. 17 of those penetrated, two non-penetrations. A lot of the shots that actually hit him and penetrated came from that T7 carrier. Yes, it was firing machine gun bullets back at him. Three, uh, eight uh, hit points of damage was blocked by armor. One enemy vehicle was spotted. Seven enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, and 169 hit points of damage assistance. 20,109 credits on a premium account. Got 1,544 courageous resistance. That's for getting a battle hero medal in a losing or drawn game. 21,653 credits altogether, and even though he fired a lot of premium ammo after repair and ammunition resupply, he still made a profit of 2,852 credits because he had a premium account. If he'd actually had a standard account, free play account, he would have lost credits. He earned 634 XP, 382 for courageous resistance, 1,017 from personal reserves, and took away 2,034 experience points altogether. So very sad, and it, it was a loss, but he'll probably be kicking himself all the more because he missed all those shots on that T7 carrier, and if he, um, on T7 car, if he'd actually hit that guy with any of those rounds, I think he probably would have been out of the game because he was very badly damaged at that point. And just one shot would have changed the outcome of the battle, but he missed three of them, in the end, three shots, and that changed the result of the game. It also didn't help that the SU-18 took his time to get to the cap, because if both of them had reached the cap at the same time and both entered the cap, I think it would have been very difficult for the enemy to then cap out, because they would have been short on time, and UK Scarface would have won. So he got let down by the SU-18, but he also got let down by his own shooting. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thanks for watching.